I am in the car on the way back from the Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania Trump rally. That's what, in my past videos, I've been explaining is the reason we're traveling all day, which is why we're doing segments for the first time in the history of the show in the car. So you have to see this. We've been talking about how those around Trump are begging him, please, you're going to lose if you continue to go off the rails at these speeches, if you can't get on a disciplined message, if you are petty. And I knew he wasn't going to be able to stay on script. We were watching uh, much of this outside of it, but I didn't know just how badly it would go here, going as far as to compare the looks of himself and Kamala Harris. Yikes. And you'll see in this clip, and we have lots to look at, that the crowd doesn't even seem to be vibing with it much. A pretty silent crowd for how many people are there. I mean, Time Magazine, think of this. Time Magazine doesn't have a picture of her. They have this unbelievable artist drawing her. And I said, is that Sophia Loren? I couldn't. Who might that be? Is that Elizabeth Taylor? They say she was a beautiful woman. Who is it? It's so beautiful. Drawing. It's a drawing. Look at the guy behind him. Not even paying attention to what he's saying. Just no interest. They took a lot of pictures that didn't work out, so they hired a sketch artist. I said, I'm sure, oh, they must be celebrating the great life and times of the magnificently beautiful Sophia Lauren. And you're not allowed to say this anymore. You know, David, don't ever get caught in this trap, David, please. Don't ever call a woman beautiful because that'll be the end of your political career, please. I want to make your life much easier, David. By the way, he's also got a great wife, I have to say. He's got a great wife. But, you know, I mean, I read a, a so-called Republican who Ronald Reagan didn't like, by the way, and she didn't like him, but she got credit for being this Reagan speechwriter. Highly overrated. I don't know anything about her. I don't know her. Treats me badly, but that's okay. She called it wrong. She's called it wrong now for about eight years. But she said one thing that got me. She said, Kamala has one big advantage. She's a very beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. So that's supposed to be, by the way, we haven't gotten to the part that I'm referencing, sorry, it's about to happen, but that's supposed to be the big mic drop, and still, I mean, a few crowds, woohoo, yeah, is, is this the part where we cheer? Not getting it. She's a beautiful woman. So I decided to go back and reread the clause. I'm not saying he's, uh, but I say that I am much better looking than her. I think I'm much better looking. Much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. And finally, he gets some cheers out of them. But for a minute and 50 seconds, just clueless. What is he talking about? And we have more from where that came from. But it's interesting. One of the things we heard in talking to Trump supporters, we'll have the video out probably by next weekend uh, from the content we just gathered. But Many of them actually were saying, I wish he would stop doing the stuff that's sabotaging his campaign, stop shooting himself in the foot. But others will say it's so annoying how the media will only report on, will only discuss sort of the, the petty attacks and won't talk about the substantive policy discussions that he's having. And as someone who has watched many of these speeches, again, I think the policy discussions in their mind might be overrated. But how can you blame media outlets? for spending time talking about him saying Kamala Harris turned black, as was one of his quotes, posting her birth certificate to try to prove that there was something fraudulent about that and failing, calling her dumb, low IQ, these disgusting attacks, and then adding on to it a joke about a joke about how he's better looking, which is strange on his own, but it's actually indicative of this obsession he has because now for how long, a week, he's been talking about this Time Magazine cover he can't get over that she looked, in his mind, really good on the Time Magazine cover in that, that illustration. It's very weird. Very, very weird. He cannot do what his campaign's begging him 
to do and it's going to hurt him. Here is another moment where as, uh, let's see, friend of the show, Aaron Rupar put it, Trump's audience in Pennsylvania is extremely bored as he tells a rambling sir story about Emmanuel Macron. At the end of a week, they came to see me. Good people, smart people, very smart people. Secretary of Treasury, smart guy, Mnuchin, others. They came back to see me. Sir, we're not able to make a deal. They're going to charge our companies a tax. Look at the faces behind him. Just no interest. Someone on their phone. I said, no, no, they're not going to do it. You don't understand. They're not going to do it. Come back and see me. You have one more day. They came back. Sir, they won't do it. They've already passed it in their so-called legislature. We're not going to do it. They're not going to be able to stop it, sir. I said, we'll stop it. Get, get Emmanuel Macron on the phone. I got him on the phone. Emmanuel, how are you? So nice to talk. Oh, Donald, Donald. It is so nice to speak to you. It's beautiful. I wish I had his accent. I would have been... You know when there's sort of background noise people having a conversation in your house while you're trying to go to bed and it's it's so soft and so irrelevant that it's almost nice it can almost soothe you to go to sleep he's talking in a tone of voice as if he's trying to soothe his audience to sleep so you, you get the point of that one we've heard the same story over and over again this is a bizarre one i use i i use the term oftentimes in closing we are a nation in decline. We are a failed nation. And I think it's a beautiful phrase, although I don't like the topic very much. I don't like what it represents, but there's a certain beauty. All of a sudden, all of these candidates, including Republicans, are saying we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. And I say, you know, what the hell do they have to copy me for, right? But they have a lot of words that they copy. Many of our words we were in. I use I, I use the term. I know the followers <clears throat> are looking up probably at some. Maybe there's a video board where they're on it because because he's uh, standing in front of them. But I don't think they realize by looking up, they all just look like they're frozen, rolling their eyes at what Trump's saying. It looks very very strange. But there, Trump saying you know that that phrase. When I talk about how we're disgusting, we're terrible, I hate us, we're in decline. So beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Something gorgeous about that. And people are stealing the phrase, what? What are you talking about? Then, defensive, he says, I, I don't ramble, I'm a smart guy. I heard the other day, and this isn't anything, I'm just saying they'll say he was rambling i don't ramble i'm really smart guy you know really smart i don't ramble but the other day anytime i hit too hard they say he was rambling rambling you know i get up and i make a speech i go for sometimes two hours two and a half hours because you know people are waiting outside for three days four days you guys were waiting and that clip now not uh, not loading, which is fine because I was going to pause it soon anyways. But isn't it an interesting defense for rambling to say, I don't ramble. Sometimes I'll go for two hours, three hours, four hours. I'll just keep talking and talking and talking in circles. I don't ramble. I just keep talking incoherently. I don't ramble. I'm a smart guy. As I said about his very stable genius comment. No one ever who is a very stable genius says I'm a very stable genius. No one ever who doesn't ramble has to say, I don't ramble. I'm smart. I'm smart. Say it. Say I'm smart. Okay. Gosh. And then he goes back to this attack. People say, be nice. Have you heard her laugh? That is the laugh of a crazy person. That is the laugh of a crazy. It's the laugh of a lunatic. Have you heard it? You know. The same thing over and over and over again. And as proof of that, here's another example. He can't get off Biden. We're going to fix every single problem. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Crooked Joe 
have career. What happened to Biden? I was running against Biden. All of a sudden, I'm running against somebody else. It's true. You know, it's interesting. I said, who am I running against? Harris. I said, who the hell is Harris? You don't know. Who the hell is Harris? Very concerning if you didn't know the last name of the vice president of the United States. That might be sort of a, a thing that should concern your family if you don't know the basic famous figures' names, you know? Just sort of sort of a basic fact, trivia fact. And you have this too. Complains. Hey, look, look. Joe Biden hates her, okay? Hates her. You don't mind if I go off teleprompter for a second, do you? Joe Biden hates her. This was an overthrow of a president. This was an overthrow. They went out. You know, I spent a hundred million dollars fighting Joe Biden. <clears throat> so uh, we've addressed over and over again the idea that something unjust, something fraudulent took place in Biden stepping off the ticket. So we won't do it again here. But strategically, it's so, so counterproductive to continue discussing something that's done. It's in the past. That's not helping his campaign at all. But it's, it's this obsessive tendency of his where because he wants to still be running against Biden, he just keeps repeating it as if that's going to change anything. But every moment he's doing that is a moment wasted because clearly those supporting Harris have no problem with the fact that she's now the nominee. Clearly her surge in the polls is proof of that. Then there's more. Every attack Kamala makes on us is a fabricated it's a lie. She's sort of a bad storyteller. She doesn't know how to tell a story very well, but she gets caught. She gets uh, caught up in her own words. She's not a She's not a very good wordsmith, they say. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to have a debate at some point. They <laughs> Says the famous wordsmith. He goes on to lie about the Minnesota elections. He lies about the tampon Tim story, as they call it. Complete bogus stuff there. Rants about her laughing more for the sake of time. I'll summarize. And at one point, he did say... Would that be okay, North Carolina? Just if you see that out there, while Trump has gotten genuinely confused about where he's speaking at certain times, I like to always be as accurate as possible. And since we were there, we were watching the full context. He wasn't getting mixed up in this moment about it being North Carolina. He was talking about people from North Carolina who were at the speech. And so he pointed them right North Carolina, pointing to the group that was from North Carolina. So we can correct the record on that since it'll probably be floating around. But... Uh, the general point about him completely going off the rails and being disoriented and doing his rambles, definitely, definitely accurate. Let me know what you thought of that in the comments. If you want to get extra content daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.